So I talk a lot of shit on collectors. And in the process of making this video, I realized something. We're all hypocrites. I may not collect game cartridges, but, you know, I got a lot of CRTs lying around. Well, that's enough armchair philosophy. You guys are here today to check out this uh, Sony TV I got on right here. It's a flat screen KV36FV26. And uh, recently did some service to it and did a video on how to service a CRT. And uh, thought I'd just do a, another video just specifically on this particular model. So let's go head around back. Okay, we're around back. This is a KV36FV26, manufactured December 2000. Uh, we got some useless stuff over there I don't know much about. And uh, S-Video. Only got one on this guy. And then uh, we got some video out. I guess you could use that. But, I mean, this is all I care about. I'm not even talking about composite. So I'm using this component RGB transcoder. Always using component. And then around the front, I think it's got some. I don't know. Sometimes they got this video up here. Let's investigate. Yeah, this video. I like this video. Sony. Here's those headphones I was telling you guys about, in case anybody gives a shit. Let me zoom in on this here. Sony cordless stereo headphones, MDR 1F0230. Cordless. Man, I mean, they're, they're ratty. I haven't put them on to check them out to see if they work or not, but... I mean, I just, I can't even think of a use I would have for them. I like cooking up to the hi-fi and blasting it. But there they are. I've seen these. I've, uh, I've got another TV that uses these too. I guess, I don't know, there's several models that use them. As far as picture quality, it's a very good set, like all flat screen Sonys. The colors are good. It's got thick scan lines. Doesn't have much of a screen door pattern. Now you have to forgive me, these, these 36 flat screens are hard to, to record. If you get too close to them, they don't look very good because you can see the mask of the tube. You get like vertical dark lines. And that's the best way to record these is up close to show sharpness. Um, and if I back up, I get a terrible moray pattern. So I'm doing my best here. Um, what else to say? It doesn't look like a tired tube, at least not this particular set. And these 26s are pretty old. I think this was made in 2000. And you know, it's still looking pretty good to me. Let's see if we can kind of zoom in here. Yeah, that's looking sharp, guys. So this is a standard definition TV, 480i is its highest resolution. Uh, that means you're not going to get any of that upscaling nonsense with lag and lack of scan lines. The build quality, I like it, it's square, it's got the speakers on the side. Unfortunately it does have that foot on the bottom that tends to warp and crack and this one is cracked on the bottom there. And yeah, it looks almost identical to a, uh, a teen series, like an FV15, except the speakers on the side here, they're just, the, the design in this area is a little bit different. Besides that, you could mistake one of these for a teen series. And when I looked in the manual, the manual said that these were the successor to the teen series. And the only meaningful difference they made that they pointed out in the manual is that the anamorphic widescreen is automatically enabled on these, whereas you had to toggle it on and off on the teen series, which is something we don't care about very much anymore. 
I mean, if you were watching movies on a Blu-ray player with this, it might make a little bit of a difference, but I mean, I watch movies, but I use my computer to watch movies and VLC and yeah, the anamorphic widescreen, whatever, it's not a big deal. There are some differences though, um, specifically the menu. Let me get the remote. So I'm not gonna show you the remote to this TV. It's a Sony, it doesn't matter. You can use any Sony remote. I can use my 1991 PVM remote on my 2001 LCD. So any Sony remote is gonna do you good. Let's get into the menu here. And I, I do like the menu features on this TV. Jeez, I can't find the menu button. There it is. Okay, so it has like the same menu as like a 120. You go into video and video standard movie and sports. Unfortunately, there is no uh, pro model, but it does have VM that you can turn on and off. I like to turn it off but I don't know, maybe you don't, but at least you have the option in here, which is very nice. You don't have that on the teen series. Another option to point out that this set has that is not in the teen series is tilt correction. This is nice, check this out. You can tilt this TV. Is it coming across? Yeah, it's coming across in the video. And these big TVs, you have to adjust this. If you just move this TV, um, orientation like if I flip it 180 degrees the tilts gonna be off because of the magnetic pulls of the earth so you you really do need to correct tilt on these and on the teen series I believe you had to go into the service menu to set it and on this it's right it's right in here which is nice it does have the buttons on the top up here which I like, and it's flat on the top, unlike the 120s that are curved, so you can set stuff down on there. And it's a very sharp TV, like all flat screen Sony's. You can see the scan lines, it is running 240p right now on my PS2 playing a old Gradius game. The focus on this one is good. The convergence is pretty good. Um, I think it's in better shape than my, my teen series I have in my room. Uh, the screen on this one isn't very tired. It is a little bit newer than my teen series. Like I said, it, it's the successor to that model. Now, let's pull up a grid. All right, before we even pull up a grid, just looking at this menu right here with the box can tell you a couple things. You can see it's bowed a little bit right here. And here, is there a little bowing? Yeah? It's a little bit of bowing down here. I mean, there's a little bit of bump right here, slight. So it ain't perfect. Let's pull up a grid. You know, it's got just little bits, little imperfections in it, just kind of all over the place. Saying that makes it sound bad, but honestly, you know, I'm not a grid fetishist. I don't like to pull up grids and stare at them for fun. It doesn't fill me with satisfaction to have a perfect grid. What I want is a good looking game. And the gameplay on it, it looks fine. You gotta look to notice any kind of imperfections. But this is a good example of a TV that you get it and it doesn't have a perfect grid, but it's good enough. And I have had CRTs that I've gotten rid of because watching movies, playing games, the it's distracting. Like you just keep noticing the imperfections, but this isn't anything you're gonna notice. But yeah, I mean, when you pull up a grid, you notice little issues here and there. I did correct this TV and when I got it, I almost didn't keep it because the geometry was worse before I corrected it. 
and it had some convergence issues. It still does. It had pretty bad convergence along the vertical axis here in the corner. It's still off a little bit, but it was worse. And I kind of spread that out over the whole screen. If you look now, like in, even in the center, you can see vertically the red and the blue gun are off a little bit. Um, so I, there's still convergence over the whole screen that's a little bit off, but it's not as bad as it was in that one corner. And even this right here, where you can see that it's off a little bit, that's nothing you're gonna notice when playing. I'll pull up a game so I can demonstrate that to you guys. All right, got Mega Man pulled up, and this is a good spot because there's a nice flat bridge right here to look at. And, you know, looking at it now, it is still a little bit bowed down here. So I could see if someone was annoyed with this and wouldn't want to play it. Me, personally, that is so minor that I'm actually fine playing on this CRT right here. And then I was telling you guys about the convergence. Like, you could see in the grid that it was a little bit off, but if you come to the center of the screen, you're not seeing anything, any red or green or blue bleeding out into his white gloves. Like, you just don't notice those types of things. I think people can get a little bit too caught up on the grid pattern and how their convergence looks. And I mean, if you're just, using the TV once in a while and you just, you, you know, you, you like collect them for fun that I can see how that would be important. But if you're using them to game, don't worry too much if the convergence is a little bit off. I mean, I have used CRTs where you will notice like in gameplay that the convergence is off. Like usually it's in a corner and you'll see like the guns are off. But uh, if you don't see it, don't worry about it. Um, let's see, we're about done here. You know, I can recommend this TV. I've only had one of these 20 models, these 26s. There's also like a 27, I believe. There might be more. I can recommend them. The menu is better than the teens. You have that, uh, that tilt correction in there and you can turn the edge enhancement off, which is nice. However, this one did have poor geometry when I got it. And even after correcting it, it ain't you know, you can still notice some flaws. And then compare that with all three. I've had three teen series and all of them had excellent geometry that I didn't need to mess with. So I don't know if I just got lucky with the teen series. I'm inclined to believe they have better geometry than, uh, than other, you know, other, um, other Wega models, which is interesting because they are the first, I believe, the teen series. So why are the older ones having better geometry? You would think logically they'd have worse because they've been around longer and have more hours on them. But th that's going to wrap it up, guys. Go out there and beat some hard games for me.